Next on our list of television and video attribution methods is Nielsen and Nielsen panels. So let's talk a little bit about how that works. Uh, keep in mind, this is an evolving area. So Nielsen is really given being given a run for their money. So currently they're, they are the standard to assess and measure uh, television, and that has a lot of influence on the pricing for television ad units. Uh, but they are in the process of being potentially displaced by other vendors, specifically iSpot, in the realm of smart television data. And you'll see why in just a moment. So the way that Nielsen and Nielsen panels have historically worked is they build basically a sample of households in the US. So these are individual households. Typically, the sample ranges between 40,000 and 60,000 households. There's it goes up or down. Some years it's been less than that, 36,000, I think, a few years ago. Um, and so this is a sample that they build out. And the people that are in the sample know that they are getting measured. And they basically are signing up for two things. Um, it's other things, but these two things in particular. So number one is journaling, recording basically what it is that they're watching on TV. And then two is the Nielsen box. So this is a device that's listening into what television they are uh, watching and tuning into. Um, and in fact, this is how ratings, when you hear Nielsen ratings, this is basically how those Nielsen ratings get, get built, is they're measuring in this sample size um, how many people are tuning into different programs out of the entire population, and they're extrapolating that to the whole U.S. population. All right, so why, you know, what, what's, what's wrong with this approach to measuring TV? Well, well number one, it, it doesn't innately tell you anything about your ROI. It could tell you how many people may have tuned in to your, an estimate of how many people may have tuned in and saw your ad, but it doesn't give you any down the funnel attribution to your, your revenue. So you, the additional steps are needed for that. Um, but beyond that, I really look at this and wonder, you know, how are they going to survive in the environment of smart television, smart TV, ACR data? Um, the reason for that is I look at this sample size, 40 to 60K. That's actually relatively small given all the slicing and dicing that needs to happen to the viewers. Because first off, most, most of the time, now, the majority of these people aren't actually watching TV 24 seven. So you already are taking, you're starting with say 50,000 folks. And then you have to ask the question, well, how many people actually have their TV on now? And they're actually actively engaging and watching things. And then you're going to want to know, well, what programs are they watching at what times? And as you start slicing the data, you're going to see a lot of sparsity. And now compare that to something like smart TVs where you have tens of millions of smart TVs. That allows you to get incredible granularity into what's happening under the covers that you just can't get with a sample of, of this size. Not to mention you have self-selection biases. You know, Nielsen will go out of their way to say, you know, they've crafted this, the, the panel, um, and they've done a, 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 a very thoughtful job in ensuring that it's representative of the U.S. population by large. But the same can be said for smart television data, except it's done after the fact. Rather than figuring out and kind of controlling who will buy the smart TV, when you have so much data, so many tens of millions of, 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 of units, you could basically start throwing out data after the fact and say, all right, I'm going to create a fair representative sample from this pool of tens of millions of televisions. And so you could back into a pool after the fact. And so that that really doesn't hold water for me. But more specifically, this granularity uh, issue really does hit home once you start looking at individual program uh, level. So if you want to tell whether or not specific times or specific programs are being watched, you're going to be shocked when you, you get your first set of post logs and you start seeing zero rated spots. Um, what's happening in those cases is there just isn't necessarily the case that no one's watching these programs. In fact, we can see in the data that's not the case. You can you can use other methods to confirm that there are people watching these zero rated spots. And in fact, they're generating revenue for, for us. The only reason why they're zero rated is that in this small sample, there was no one tuned in at that particular point in time. And in fact, there are some uh, savvy media agencies out there that have made an entire business out of gaming the Nielsen system of how you basically purchase up and strategically buy zero rated spots that you've already assessed have value that just isn't getting accounted for doing, due to the granularity issue. Um, so this is part of the reason why brands like iSpot 
are starting to win out in, in terms of becoming the future currency for television ratings. We're not there yet, but that's the direction this is going.